Good morning. Happy Wednesday. I have neuro coffee in hand and it is perfect. Mm, that's really good. Okay. I got a couple questions to work through uh, today. Um, today is Wednesday. That means tomorrow is Thursday. So tomorrow's chips and salsa day. But we also have the uh, 6 a.m. coffee and coaches conference call on Zoom. Um, anybody is welcome to attend that. Um, just remember to post your coffee prep up on Instagram. Tag me so I can share it with the with the rest of the world and let them know that we're all getting together. Um, we've we've had a a series of great calls, great people coming on there. So it's been really fun. So I want to continue with that. And we'll try to continue with that as long as we, as long as we can, even when things try to get back to, to normal, we're going to try to maintain that. So very cool. Um, now let's go to the Q and A. So I've got a question from Greg and Greg says, under what circumstances might you see a narrow ISA presentation with significant limitations in dorsal rostral expansion? Would you consider it common for these findings to be restricted on one side? And then he wants to know a little bit about intervention. So let's let's talk about this. Let me bring in the uh, the model here. Okay. So dorsal rostral, the space up here in the upper back. So this is where you have a, a lot of expansion during a breath in. And so if this becomes restricted, you get an alteration of scapular position. If, and if I change the scapular position, I immediately create a constraint as to what motions will be available. And so when we talk about dorsal rostral, I'm gonna leave that here for a second. When we talk about dorsal rostral expansion, when we lose that, we lose our external rotations. Okay, and so, so if you've been following along, you know that, that we, all we have are ERs and IRs. We don't have all these other, other uh, imaginary planes to play in. And, and so we're going to have to monitor our external rotation. So it's not just the pure external rotation. So we're talking about horizontal abduction. We're talking about flexion. So when I lose dorsal rostral expansion, I'm going to lose my ERs. Um, under what circumstances with the narrow, now we're talking about a compensatory sequence. And so when we look at the sequence of events that, that arises from people with uh, an axial skeleton that is biased towards inhalation with a uh, compensatory exhalation strategy, so it's a narrow ISA, under those circumstances, the dorsal rostral compression happens a little bit later in the sequence. So a lot of times what you're going to see is you're going to see a loss of internal rotation in the shoulder first, followed by the loss of external rotation. So in most cases, when you have a dorsal rostral compression in a narrow ISA individual, you're gonna lose measures in both directions. So keep that in mind. And that's how you're gonna be able to distinguish um, rather easily um, whether you've got this dorsal rostral compression on, on the narrow. Um, so uh, as far as seeing it unilaterally, Absolutely. So you're going to see <clears throat> people with a number of strategies to manage all the internal and external forces. And so some of those people are going to be utilizing a much more asymmetrical strategy. So, so it's very, very common, in fact, to see uh, a, a more biased strategy on one side versus the other. And so dorsal rostral compression is just like any other compensatory strategy. If I need it, I'm going to use it. And so very often you'll see it at one side and the other. And then it's just a matter of, of using an asymmetrical activity when we're trying to restore movement options. So if I'm trying to restore expansion to the dorsal rostral area on one side, both sides of the body are not going to be doing the same thing. It doesn't mean that you couldn't use a, a symmetrical activity and be successful. It just means that you're probably going to be more successful and more likely to recapture the movement options that you wanted if you're using a more uh, asymmetrical activity. Now, when we talk about those compensations and then our, our strategies to, to intervene, um, I've got a number of resources up there. So if you go to the YouTube channel, Greg, um, there's a bunch of stuff for, for dorsal rostral. There's a seated variation of dorsal rostral expansion, which I love to give to people that work at desks because they can, they can intermix this activity with their, their regular desk activities all day long. Um, you'll see another one that uses a squat variation um, when we're talking about a better band pull apart, there's a there's a video up on on I believe Instagram and um, on on the YouTube's 
um, as far as that goes. So those are really, really good strategies. The thing that you're gonna wanna do though, when we're talking about creating expansion in this area, is you're gonna avoid that 90 degrees of shoulder flexion um, position for the, for the shoulder and for the hip, at least initially. And the, way, the reason I say initially, because eventually you want to be able to utilize that position and create a yield, yielding strategy in the dorsal rostral area, because we do need the ability to, to expand and delay our ability to compress that area when we're talking about turning athletes, so baseball pitchers, tennis players, golfers. Um, they need to be able to compress that area to create their, their force output, but they also need yielding and, and, and overcoming strategies to be able to alternate to actually produce their turning. So, so this, is a great, this is a great question, Greg. Um, but understand, let's back up a little bit and do a quickie review. Narrow ISAs, the dorsal rostral is gonna compress a little bit later than if I was a, a wide ISA. Um, I need to recapture that so I can recapture my external rotation measures. Um, it will present unilaterally, so I need to make sure that I can produce eccentric orientation of that area to create that full expansion, but then I'm going to have to superimpose a challenge to it to allow it to be concentrically oriented but yielding to produce rotation in high-speed, high-force rotational athletes. So Greg, I hope that's helpful for you. Um, great question. Keep them coming. Um, happy Wednesday to everybody. Remember chips and salsa tomorrow and the, the uh, coffee and coaches conference call in the morning at 6 a.m. Um, I'll post the link on my uh, Facebook page um, right before the call tomorrow morning. So I'll see you guys tomorrow.